You want to use them, basically. I must never harm another or cause another loss, any form of loss. I'm free and unlimited ability to contract and settle debt in private and under commercial law. I can basically do as I please as long as I abide by these principles. My person that's attached to me is Mr J Harris, who's a fictional entity created by the government. Subject to civil policy jurisdiction, must fulfil all duties given to and governed by corporate policy, tax, etc., under statute. Does business in the public sector, or I don't. So what is a person? Okay. They're inviting a person created by the United Kingdom Corporation. They created something when you were born. You just didn't know because you couldn't know. Your parents didn't know and their parents before them didn't know. Because it's been hidden from you. Because it's too simple. That's the point. Our world is so bloody complicated. But it's not complicated. Everything complicated has a very, very simple foundation. Everything. I'm just simple. I just look at things simply. Your person was created when your birth was registered and evidenced by your birth certificate. Man created government, which in turn created persons. Your person is not you. It is a legal fiction which you are falsely identifying with because you've been deceived. Massively. You don't get to say what its rights and duties are. The United Kingdom Corporation does. Like I said, you've been misled and you've been deceived. Let's define the word person. Includes natural person, firm co-partnership, association, limited, limited, limited liability company or corporation, legal personality. Well, I've got, I've got a problem with this. First off, was the first one we had was, was how can you define person with exactly the same word because you're failing to define anything? And this is in Black's Law Dictionary. Eight. If you look at person in Black's Law Dictionary 3, you'll see it's a fiction. It actually says it, it's a fiction. Because it's not real. It's not real. And what, I, I want to ask a question as well. Why would you need eight revisions of one dictionary of law? For what possible reason? Why would the words change? But why would they change? A word means something and it never changes. So if it's being changed, it's being changed for a reason. The creation of the person. When you were born, you, your mother, father, submitted a birth certificate registration application form. In the formulation of any limited company corporation, there is always a certificate of registration to create its legal personality. Your fictional person, known by Mr, Mrs, or blah, 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 you can see it up there, is created by the same means. So, this is interesting as well. People are like, oh, I couldn't believe this. When I actually found out, and this comes from Rob Bernard. Do, do we know Rob Bernard is? Really? Yeah, 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 good. I'm glad. Right. When you submit, you are bending to another's will. Okay? So you're bending, you're agreeing to bend to their will. When you register, you are handing over title ownership of whatever you're registering to whoever you are registering it to. You actually physically hand this over. And in doing this, you acknowledge the transferring of that authority. When you apply, it actually means you're begging. And when you beg, it's assumed you know what you're begging for and you know what you're going to give up. That's what this means. Most of the time, you actually volunteer an application. You actually volunteer. You're not made to do it. Did I make you get a credit card? But you submit an application. Everything in this, the whole world is created, it runs on submitting applications for this, submitting applications for that. I can't, I'm waiting for health and safety to say I can't put a pencil behind me because I'll get a splinter. <laughs> but it's going to come, and you know it's coming. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's why you're laughing. 
Right, this is the document. This is unbelievable. Right, this is, you, oh, you've all seen this, yeah? You know what this is, yeah? Birth certificate. Right. You get a certified copy, you do not get the original. Because that goes somewhere else. This up here, when you actually look at this, you, you look at this, and you get your own. When you get home, or get, or you get your kids, whatever, get this document and look at it. Because it's phenomenal, what they've done. The name of the person's being created in capitalised surname. See, the surnames are capitals, okay? It's a fiction. This is being created. That fiction is going to be created there. But what they need is, they need another fiction to do it. They have to have a fiction there to do this. Who is the informant? You actually inform on your own children. Do you know that? You inform on them. It's brilliant, isn't it? Eh? And your qualification is, you're one of their parents. Mad, mad. And it's capitalised, it's all capitalised. And it is absolutely true. Look at your birth certificate, informant, the qualification needed, and it will say needed, and you inform because you are the father or the mother. What you don't know is that at the bottom, there is a declaration. Now, a declaration is in common law. A declaration is a sworn oath of a man or a woman. And there's a reason that's on the bottom. Because without that man or woman being present, the fictionist mother or father isn't present. Now you're seeing that the person is attached to the human being. But to do this, they need the human being to be there. That's why there's a declaration at the bottom of it. And this, it says it quite simply. It, you, you have to be present to represent the person needed to create the new person's legal personality. I know it's a tongue, it, 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 believe me, I, it's mind-boggling, but it's, it really is. This is what we've found, and it all makes sense. That's the point. This is what I want to tell you about it. And then you register it to a corporation. <laughs> the General Register Office. Get your birth stiff, get and lift it up, and you'll see G-R-O. It's the General Register Office. That's who you're registering it to. Registration and your children. And this is not funny. This is really, really true. Okay? To this day, registration still means the same thing. You hand over or you transfer the legal title to the body you have registered it with. As you have seen, the worst possible way this has been done is by the birth certificate. It's been abused. A simple show of this is to... Do you have to mandatory school with your children? Well, you do. And can you take them on holiday when you want to? No. Because what happens when you take them out of term time? I know people have received £100 fines for taking their kids out of term time, taking them on holiday. And they have to be vaccinated. The thing is, it's their property. You signed over title ownership of that child to the government when you registered it. You don't, you've got no claim to your children whatsoever. You just don't know it because you've been duped. If you want proof of it, the social services. What happens when you don't look after their property or they pertain you're not looking after their property properly? Linda Lewis, baby P. What happens? They take the child away. And not all children are taken away because the child is in danger. Do not believe that for a second. Do not believe the propaganda, because it's not true. And my friend down there, Mr Gerrish, can prove this many, many times. Well, what you'll notice is it says social services PLC, because it is a PLC. And a PLC is a public limited company that has shareholders, and shareholders need profits. And where do they get profit from? Stealing children. I couldn't believe this when I found it. I was stunned. Brian's been telling me this for, for 18 months. And I couldn't believe it because I couldn't see any facts and I only deal with facts. I deal with black and white, right or wrong. There's no in-betweens. Something's right or it's wrong. And this is fact and it makes sense. I want to prove it as well. Consider this. Could the government 
lawfully take your car and crush it if you owned it. Right. When you register your vehicle, you hand over the ownership, title ownership of that vehicle to the government. You get a V5 document and it's the registered keeper. Look on anyone, registered keeper. If you look on the advert that's on the telly and they crush the car in front of the two, uh, the couple just come back from wherever they come back and the car crushes up in front of them, the voice says, we have a legal right to do this. But it doesn't say, we have a lawful right to do this. Because they haven't got a lawful right to do it. They've just duped you into giving your property to them so they can crush it when you don't put bloody tax on it. Incredible, incredible. Basically, as well, when you do this, you, when you register it, as stated, because it is stated, you agree to abide by their rules. MOT, certificate, road tax, and, fuel, and the fuel levy um, tax as well. You agree to this. This is what you agree to because it's part of the deal. And then you register it to another corporation. Please remember this. Please, please remember this in future. When you register something, anything, you give up ownership of it. Your house, your car, your children, whatever it is, you give up ownership of it. I know you shouldn't own your children, and you don't, but your children are your children. And no one has the right to take that child away from you. No one. You get a certificate of title, and it's worthless. It's not worth the paper it's written on. Fixed penalty notices. So why are there so many fixed penalty notices? You get a fine for filling your bin up too much, or putting it out on the wrong day, or sticking it in the wrong position. Speed cameras, sawn documents. Well, what are these notices in the real world? They've been issued by corporations. And the corporations are dreaming up more and more reasons for penalising you. Penalised by the weight of forfeit. Something surrendered, subject to surrender as punishment for a breach of contract. These are called adhesion contracts. An adhesion contract is a type of contract that is legal and binding agreement that someone writes, makes it there, they basically do as they please. They've got all the bargaining power, they attach it to you, and it's to their advantage. A notice is not a bill. A notice is not a demand. If you went to a restaurant and the waiter come up and said, that's £60 for your meal and I serve you notice, what would you do? Pay or ask for a bill? Well, you'd pay then, obviously. You ask for a bill. Have you ever thought about actually asking the council, can I have a bill, please, for my council tax? Because you've never actually sent me one. This is simply a tool of revenue collection. And the true reason this is being forced upon you is because your person is simply to maintain the illusion that they have control over your life, your fortune and your freedom. Because your fear and their ability to take from you something you deem to be valuable. And that is money. Yeah? Do we all believe money is valuable? We all use it every day, don't we? Yeah? And we all believe it's got some worth. These pieces of papers and coin has some worth. Because you can take it somewhere and someone will give you services for it. I shouldn't have said it that way, should I? <laughs> uh, you can buy things for it or you can trade it everywhere. You, you, you believe it's valuable. But have you ever asked yourself this? Have you ever asked this? One, it's all in capitals. 